So most of you got your your feet done and uh, this is my finished one so you can see the feet are established. Um, both all the cleats are done. I never ever got to mine this week. I was been too busy with other things. With that lathe going bottoms up on me it was a bit of a problem. Anyway so that's pretty much it. You can give you an idea how I've got those cleats. I like the cleats looking long and thin as opposed to real chunky. Um, these, even in my finished one, could likely be thinned down quite a bit. Maybe will if I ever get time to finish it off. Uh, the other question today was about the hat. And so if you kind of visualize the hat coming up and over the back of the head, so likewise on the back of his head it has to curve down and, and start the curve going in for the top of his hat. And yes, you can open this up completely in this area here so the hand is separated just by thinning down the glove, you can uh, make you be able to give you access to complete the back of that hand if you want. I prefer to leave it set the way it is, just because I like the curl on my, my fingers there. I like the way that came out. But the trick here is to make sure that the hat isn't too bulbous and you don't leave it sitting away up high. That's the key there, I would say. So now, today I think we'll work on on his uh, his body. Now remember he's good and fat so uh, we're going to try and keep him that way. Okay. So there we are there. He's not very well defined as it stands. You might have to trim off the uh, the front of his knee here to match whatever shape you've left for the, the front of his uh, leg in there. So this may have to be trimmed off here. So we'll, we'll start with that and uh, I'll just use a uh, that big gouge of mine and uh, so just turn it upside down because that'll give you the shape. And I like to get everything all nice and smooth and then when I want to give them detail I can give them detail and uh, not be too concerned that I haven't got the right shape to under, underneath to start with. Sometimes you get too carried away. Everybody wants to give their carvings detail before they get the shape. Shape is first. Alright, so there it is, rounded. Um, I'm going to maybe do a little bit more down here. And that gives. So then on the side here, I got to make i got to make this side uh, disappear a little bit. You can see that it's too bulbous in here. So that leg, to make it come forward, <coughs> I have to take off a bunch of material in here. You could even scoop it out a little bit so there's a bit of motion in there. And I would hold it right there because we've got to put a, a notch in here eventually to show the creases in the in the uh, material. Now I'll round it off a bit more coming around. Could have spent a bit more time on this gouge a bit. A little bit dull. Okay, so a round bum. There's no sharp edges on a bum, especially if it's bunched up. And the shape is already there for the in the rough out. I keep on calling it a rough out. It's actually a cutout. Rough out being one that was turned on a rotor system.
There, that's not too bad. So it kind of gives you the idea that the, the leg is now pointed uh, by taking the material out of that and hollowing that out to a certain extent. Um, in the front of the leg, I want to be able to turn that so that I can create a, a fairly sharp edge in here. So I just continue that around. And depending on how much of a belly you want to have in here, uh, will determine on how deep of a cut you put in here. But uh, I think he, uh, Dave Stinson's idea in here was to have a fairly deep cut in there. And uh, I'll just take a V tool and put a stop cut in there. so that I've got this fairly bulbous part of his belly in here. Okay, I'll just leave it there for now, but uh, I'll make this, I'll take the, all the saw marks off the back of his, of his uh, shirt. And there it is, I took the saw marks off the back, and now I want to curve this down slightly going into where the, the joint is going to be it's kind of going to be kind of a flop over here where the the shirt and his fat flops over. So in order to make that work, I have to take some material off of this leg here and uh, bring it up. And you can see, uh, can you see it there? Yeah. Can you see how bulbous this is in here? Um, I want to get rid of uh, some of that material there to make that. I'm going to point this knee more in underneath and that exaggerates this foot here a bit better. I'm going to take some material off of there in order to make that work. Notice how I remove that wood. I, I don't just push the, the gouge straight. I actually turn the gouge as I'm doing it, kind of in a, a scooping motion. And that helps to, uh, to find the, or take the wood off easier. And sometimes even go against the grain, which is typically a no-no. Okay, so there he is with some of that wood removed. And you can see the, quite a difference in here now. Okay, just about all the way around at this point in time. Okay. Just to jump ahead a little bit here, uh, I see some of you are working on your bases. So all I did was uh, I just curved it just like uh, he did here. Uh, he curved his as well. So uh, I, I just curved it and, so, and I left a, like, uh, what do you call that? That pad? They have? Rosin. Rosin. And uh, so in order to make the, uh, I made up the, the uh, rubber and left the cleats on it, but you can see I just drilled holes. Uh, I actually never drilled them, I used the, the gouge to gouge them out. And then I put them in, and so it sits in like that. And when I drilled my hole, I only glued the, the peg into the base. So that allows me then, uh, for a, especially for our, our demo, here, where are we? So that that allows that to to fit in like that. So it's a simple process. So. Well, you have a peg in the foot. 
I have put a peg in the foot. You can see the peg there. And can I see where it extends into the boot? Oh yeah. The of the boot? Oh sure. So the hole in the in the boot is right there. Okay. Right between the cleats. Right between the cleats. Yeah. Okay. So it's well hidden, and the whole idea of of whenever you anchor anything like that is to make it well hidden. It's like in order to to see that, you'd have to really look at. To is find. It a wooden peg? What is that peg? It's just a wooden dowel. That's oh, a wooden just a piece of wooden peg. Yeah, I, I use a variety sizes of uh, wooden pegs. If it's a small carving, I just use a round toothpick. And I've got a, uh, a drill at home that is the same size as the diameter of a, of a uh, toothpick. It works out just dandy. Okay. Uh, okay, so you can see in, in here, as I visualize the, that cut in there, I seen it as quite a, a deep cut, so you can see the cut in here. So I just made a V tool and just start it and kind of give it a curve coming around so that layer of flat fat looks like it's laying over top of the leg. And uh, if you look at it side on, you can see by taking down the side of the bum here a little bit, that makes it sit out a little bit better. So. That's what exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to knock this down just a little bit here. I'm going to take the V tool and I'm going to curve that. I'm going to start a little bit high here. You'll see why in a minute. Don't be afraid to to give it a a good depth to your with you when you're doing your V tool. Because that makes the leg look like it's curling underneath his belly. So it looks something like that. And you, now you can see that there's there's a ball brush section above it. All right. Then take your your gouge. And if it's not as big one as mine, it doesn't matter. But now start to curve that that top piece. And that just smooths it all out. A little bit of a sharp edge coming around here. Come the other way. And I'll put a, a knife cut in there eventually, right in that notch, so that the uh, I can create that nice shadow line in there. All right, so then we got to work our way around to the back, and so on his on the back of that, you can see that. Remember, I started to bring that up on this side here. So the reason for that is I have to continue going up and over in order to create that the shirt being pulled up and that exposes this belt where the fat hangs over the belt on the other uh, areas. So you can draw that on if you like and I tend to just carve it but you know create a, a nice little shape going up and try and make it match roughly what it looks like here. Again, just so that V tool that you started here, then you can just continue it. Now lay your V tool. Once you got your notch in there, lay your V tool on its side. It becomes a, a flat chisel at that point, and instantly you got a a belt starting to take shape there. more of a flat area in there. Okay. Yep. So then uh, 
it looks something like like that. So now that's just just for the fun of it. We've come all the way from we we've come all the way from here all the way around so far. So we might as well just finish it off and and get into this area here. So we want to get we want to make this belly look like it's it's flopping over. Okay. So this cut then comes right down and come right up on the inside of the leg here. So it requires removing some wood. So I want to create a flat, <coughs> a flat spot in here where the, the legs join in the crotch. Okay, right in there. Now I got to get rid of the whack of wood in here. Uh, any gouge will do in there. There. There's something like that so that kind of dressed up so you can see right away I want to make this leg then go up and underneath the belly so I got to remove a bit of wood in there. Now you can clean up this area in here later on, but the idea is to get a, a leg established coming down this way for for this foot and leg, and then come down uh, underneath here so that you create that belly hanging over. It comes down and around, so now we're going to continue that. It comes all the way around, and you might have to skinny down this leg here a little bit to make it look as if it's coming underneath the uh, the belly, okay? All right, so there we are with the uh, the belt loops. We got the pouch in the, in the pocket for to put his chewing tobacco in, okay? So now you can see that the, the pouch sits out the furthest, then the loops on the, uh, for the belt sits in. Keep in mind that loops on pants for ball players, uh, depending on which team you're looking at, if you're going to paint this, uh, have different loops. Uh, Blue Jays loops are wide with, and they come down on an angle. They aren't straight down. Um, I'm going to, I'll show you how to do all straight down ones and then you can adapt it to whatever design you want. So first things first, <coughs> I'll use a pencil so it's easier to erase. So I want to give them a pouch in here. So I'm going to give them a pocket. And there's the pocket and then I'm going to, uh, in there I want to put the, the pouch for the chewing tobacco. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on, I want to draw on the loops for his belt. And you can see that this one in the diagram is wide, this one is narrow. 
And so your call as to how, what shape you want to make it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw that on. Oops, that went a bit crooked there. I'm gonna make them all the same. And I'll come over here to that one. One group looks like it goes right into the pocket, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but your call as to how you want to make that work. Mm -hmm. All right. So the thing I want to point out with the loop is that the top part of the loop disappears underneath his shirt. So you don't have to worry about that. In other words, you don't have to worry about the top part of your pair of pants. If you look at your own pair of pants, you'll see that the loop extends above and below uh, in order to accommodate the belt. So this goes down below the belt. So whatever the width of the belt is going to be, then you got to make sure that it extends down. So if your belt is, is fairly narrow, then you can see that it, it comes down below. Uh, a little bit. There. So if, that's, if this is the width of your belt here, make sure that your loop comes down below. So now it's just a question of outlining that, and I'm going to use a V-tool to do that. Um, likely pick a smaller V-tool to, to uh, outline it. gives me a bit better control. So I, I, I won't... Uh, I typically will... Where are we? I typically will, will do my... Any circles I do first. You're under the camera. Oh, let's go wide again. Any circles... Any circles I typically do first. So I'm going to just put a, a gouge in like that, give it a push and you can see there's the, the curve and you can lift it up and turn it around or you can put it in, if you put it in you can slide that around and make your circle. So basically all you're creating is a stop cut. All you're creating is a stop cut. Okay. So now I can come in with a, uh, a V tool and I'll pick a smaller V tool in order to do it. This happens to be looks like about two millimeter. And uh, so now I'm going to come around the outside of that. I want to create my pocket. Leave the, if you turn the V tool a bit on its side. And the bottom of the pocket is round on his. Uh, sometimes pockets are round, sometimes they are square, so your call, I'll make it a little bit round, flat across the bottom. So now the trick is to remove some wood without removing all the detail that you left there. You got your stop cuts for your pouch. I'm removing wood from around the outside. And I'm going to just very gently come up and if you just circle that cut you'll create that. And there's the pouch. So now you have to have an opening at the top. So once again, turn your turn your V tool on its side, and get, try and give it a bit of a of a sweep in there so that it has a bit of a pull to it. A bit of the burr came off there, but that gives you the idea. So you got lots of material on the bum here to, to work with. So now I said the pocket sits out the furthest, then the next thing is the loop for the belt. So now again, turn your 
your V tool on its side and go up and create that. Make sure it extends below where the belt is going to be. Make that a bit wider. I'll use my steel eraser to remove that pencil mark. So now the belt sits underneath those loops, so you got to remove the wood in between in order to create that level. So once I get that established, then I come back with my knife and I put a stop cut in on either side of that loop. What I'll do is I'll do one loop here and then I'll pass it around. You can have a good look at it. So then the belt fits in underneath the loop. So I'll do one side here only and then, like I said, I'll pass it around so you can have a look at it. Simple. Okay, I'll pass this around. So we're going to define the uh, the separation. He's got a, a shirt on, and uh, underneath his overshirt. So you got to create that that edge. But we'll do a very little bit here just to give you the idea. So then once that's defined, once you've got that, that area defined here, then you can see how the, there's wrinkles in, the, in the, the shirt. And you can use a V-tool in there, but you can see the way the diagram is, you can see that that's a round hole there, whereas over here it is a, is a sharp, in other words, a V-tool over here and maybe a, a gouge on this side here. And it doesn't have to be very prominent. It can be very subtle. And so when you go to clean up and get your shapes going here, if you just remove wood in the direction of those folds, it naturally takes those shapes and gives you that, that subtleness that is required in there. That's not very clear. You say you're using a B or a no, this is just a gouge. This is, it happens to be a number seven. A number nine would work in there as well. Here, here's a number nine. So, a, 
if you if you remove the wood and it, it creates a, a few sharp edges in there but see how you can just by removing wood in the direction and over on the other side of course it's going to go this way on remember I said the back is very straight it's only at where it comes up to the arms where it changes and has a little bit more detail so see how it, it stretches it makes it look like it's stretching by using that so then the section down underneath here then grab your v-tool and now now you can create a a lot more uh, emphasis as far as the, uh, the the shape is concerned here give it detail and see how I I made it like more like a crow's foot so that it it comes in on angles to where the where it's being pulled okay and that can be extended out a little ways uh, it depends on you know just how much detail you want to give it but it eventually goes to nothing often I'll come back and I'll use a, a round gouge at the very end of that just to, so that it kind of disappears into nothing the same thing applies with a, uh, a bend and a foot like this bend uh, where are we? This bend in the in the foot. Where are we? See this bend in the foot here. So how this comes down again, you can see that's very sharp angles. So there's no reason why you can't just use your V tool in there and. And just start giving it shape. I got it. Yeah. Okay. So notice that it's wider on the top, and then as it's crunched, it gets comes together. Same in the diagram. See how it's wider on the top, and then it all kind of comes together in the one joint at the bottom. All of that is really important. So then. As you work around here, you can see, well, it's a little bit crunchy in here, so you can put a, a little bit more detail in there, and it, again, it's not the sharp V's, it's just kind of a, a gradual thing. Uh, these you are obviously just round gouges that are coming up there, and, and so on. So that's all, all part and parcel of it. Elbows, make sure the elbows are pointed. Um, spend a bit of time pointing your elbows. Um, again, use a, a gouge to, to just take material away. Remember that the point of the elbow is the uh, pressure point, so everything tapers away from the elbow. So if you make sure you, you use that, remember we put those squares there? If you put that square there, then you you'll work away from that. Where there's a pinch in your in your uh, elbow here, then it's going to be a sharp. Use a V tool so that you you create the notch in the elbow. Okay, so that's kind of all the the, the factors involved, and you can see by the diagram where there's wrinkles and where there isn't wrinkles. Um, to define this better here, um, I use a knife and it's a three cut motion. I, if I'm happy with where that sits, I put a straight up and down cut. Okay, so I'll go over that two or three times just to get good depth on it. And now I can create a nice shadow in there just by removing that making that bulbous section come over. The bottom is a little bit flatter, so you don't have to have quite as, as sharp an angle. But see how you, it creates that nice shadow line in there? It's a three cut, don't try and do it in two cuts, because otherwise it'll move on you. All right, it's the same with fingers. If you wanna to find fingers better, make sure you put a straight cut in the middle, right where you want to have it, have the uh, the two fingers separation, 
and then remove a little bit of material on both sides. It's a three cut as well. So that, that gives you that nice shadow line in there. All of these things uh, play into a, a good carving. If you, uh, it, it just tweaks it and makes it a little bit more special. And if you're going in competition, that's one of the things they'll look for. And shadows are a big part of uh, competition. Uh, as well as how the clothing hangs. All your clothing is going to be um, played on. Now, um, what have we got for time? Better talk about painting. And we did start with that earlier. Um, but we'll get it on the tape here. The... To paint something, uh, I prefer to paint directly on the wood. But before I do that, I wash it. I wash it with, I put it under the, the kitchen sink with lukewarm water uh, running on it, get it wet, and then I put a, a good dab of sunlight soap, dishwasher soap, um, on in the sink uh, on the side so that it doesn't get washed away and uh, keep the tap running. And I uh, put my toothbrush into the the soap and then I scrub down the carving all over and I keep scrubbing it, scrubbing it, scrubbing it uh, until I get all my marks off and it does two things. First of all, it cleans it obviously, but it will also heal all of your uh, uh, all of your cut marks if you've got a, a cut mark in there that you um, don't want to carve out. Quite often if you wet it, it'll, uh, it'll seal up. and. Uh, once it dries, and you have to let it dry for about a day, uh, but wash it off good to get rid of the soap as well. So once you got all your soap on there and scrubbed it, then use the toothbrush again and put it underneath the tap and scrub it off so that you get rid of all the excess soap. Because if you go to use acrylic paint and your soap's still on there, you're going to get bubbles and you don't want bubbles. Wash it off and then uh, let it sit for a day. And you'll find that it's a very white and all the fuzzies that are on there uh, you can now carve off and uh, any other minor adjustments make sure though that your glove is relatively clean because we tend to have dirty gloves and uh, or dirty hands for that matter and uh, then uh, once you're satisfied with the overall shape then go ahead and paint it I paint it with uh, directly on the wood with acrylics uh, watered right down uh, so that's the consistency of 2% uh, milk, roughly. Um, any separations between a, a blue and a white, for instance, two different colors, um, I make sure I have a stop cut uh, to separate it. Otherwise, the, wa the paint will bleed from one to the other, and you don't want that to, to do that. Uh, skin color, uh, make sure you add a little bit of... Uh, red into your skin color and I like to uh, put, when it, if there's emphasis in certain parts, I like to add a little bit of uh, uh, red color to it and I work it in. Uh, so it's not too overpowering but it's a little bit overpowering, a little bit of red. So I use it on the top of the ears, on the nose. In this case he's going to have the chew in his pocket or in his pouch uh, in his, uh, under his lip. So I'll highlight that as well and then a little bit darker for the lips. But uh, I, I use a, a Caucasian uh, paint, a Delta Ceram Coat, and then I add uh, tomato spice to it to give it that slightly reddish color. I use a, a paintbrush with water on it to blend it in so that it's not too overpowering. Paint your solid colors, it would be uh, your eyeballs white, and then whatever color of eyeball you want to make, make sure that you use that. Um, the, um, the paints are uh, watered down and uh, really don't try and overpower it. If, it. if it's too thick a paint, it'll look plastic and you don't want to make it look plastic. Is there any questions on uh, painting? You don't, with acrylics, uh, you don't have to wait. You can paint one color and then go right into the next color, and that's a, a benefit. Um, 
If you're going to put a logo on for his hat, make sure you get that design on there ahead of time. And uh, Larry did one in the last one that, uh, of the Blue Jays, and that came out really good. But uh, again, if you're going to use Blue Jay colors, uh, use them or whatever your favorite team is. Uh, the, the sand on here can somewhat be de, uh, hard to do. Um, you can actually go and buy a spray paint that looks like a sand and uh, I have used that before and it comes out not too bad. Uh, you might even want to rough up the surface more. Um, the rubber, uh, I would use either a, a very dark brown or, or I wouldn't go with black. I would stay away from black. Uh, design your shoe as to the color of your your team, but uh, paint the spikes with a silvery color. Um, try and make them look metal, even though that most of them these days are kind of a composite. Do you blend with the shoes? Uh, I'm sorry. Do you blend with the shoes now? Uh, blend the, the the silver, you mean? Yeah. No, I just do the. I no, would. some of them in the company if they're white. Go white. Oh yeah. Well, whatever. Yeah, do whatever color suits your uh, your your team. And I guess that's kind of it for now. Uh, um, oh, if it's going to be a, a white beard, uh, any hair for that matter. But if it's going to be a white beard, I start with battleship gray, and then I highlight it with uh, ivory, and then with white on top of that. And don't forget whatever color you do, uh, your your beard and mustache. Uh, make sure you don't forget the eyebrows and the hair on the back of the hair. Say it's he's uh, got brown hair. Well, I start off with either a light or a dark under undercoat, and then highlight with a um, another color. The it's always important whenever you're doing hair to at least use two different colors. It's it shows better. If it's a solid color, it makes it look like he's got a hair dye, hair job. Okay. Just to oh good. Just to uh, point out what I meant by two different colors. See his mustache here, and you can see that he's used a, a dark color underneath. Uh, maybe even better in this picture here, a dark color underneath, and then highlighted on top of it with a lighter brown. And the eyebrows are done, and so is the hair done the same color. So. Yeah, so put the undercoat on first and then the coat, the color that you really want, it kind of is dry brushed on top.